Good morning. I have a very important question to ask you this morning. Have you communicated with anybody today or yesterday? That was a weekend. Ooh, a long weekend. And I mean really communicated, not just hello or surface stuff, but have you really made an effort to connect to somebody? I think that is one of the most important things that we as human beings can do, because we can all do it. We can all uh, make our lives better if we communicate to people. Like my grandson, who's 16, I told him, I said, I noted that uh, he's did a lot of socializing in his mother's family, uh, and he would go around, he went off to school and he'd go around shaking hands with everybody, talking to them, when he had his coming home party once, and when he was visiting. And I was so impressed, because he's young, and I said, you've already got social skills. That, And so just do it. He just talk to everyone that you possibly can. And so I was so proud of him the other night when we went to play, he was very impressed with the, with the acting, especially of this one person. But after it was over, he, he made an effort to go out and shake hands with some of the cast members, tell them how great they were, <laughs> and just told them. And Raymond said they even talked about him after, afterwards and s commented on what he had done because he was sitting there quite silent watching it but afterwards he just came alive and came over there and I thought boy what a wonderful start he's getting in becoming a people person and I I you know there's uh, there's all kinds of ways that we can improve our our people skills and you know to me I think communication, good communication, is absolutely the most important thing in your health, in your well-being, in how successful you feel in life. It just can't be emphasized how important it is. Now here in my big complex, I have, uh, there, there's a lot of people that I, you know, I try to go down at least once a week, maybe more, out to the patio and meet up with new people and talk to the ones that are socializing and of course we run into each other on the elevators and in, but that seems to be the best place for us to meet so I try to uh, keep up with the new people in by the elevator? Uh, well I know I don't talk in the elevator <laughs> well we do we have yeah. quite a lot of conversations you know one words or two I mean, some people are very good in the elevator at, at one-liners, saying something clever well, while see, you're traveling with them. Yeah, usually that's that the way I like to have a conversation on somebody on the elevator, you know. <laughs> and if they're really um, um, stupid, then you get off on a different floor and just get off and then wait for the next elevator, you know. I mean. Oh, well, yeah. And, you know, there's all kinds of people that are kind of... Uh, suspicious and you sort of have to keep showing that you really are interested in them for they'll break down and even talk to you and now this could be an alcoholic this could be but this to me is the biggest uh, thing that you can do to deter crime oh, you around you three minutes and the first time you brought my name up <laughs> uh, <laughs> that that around you uh, is by getting better acquainted with these people and I think that for a long time we had these columnists in the paper that always say, uh, this person needs uh, to go to a psychologist. Uh, they need professional help. Don't you try to do it. You're not professionals. Oh, I thought that was so absurd since most people around are never going to be able to afford professional help. And I've just discovered too that professionals don't even like to talk anymore. They just like to prescribe, you know, like drugs. And I, I thought, how have we ever come to the conclusion that drugs can help so much um, with the mentally ill that can just transform them? That's not true. For goodness sake. Uh, this 
complex happens to have quite a number of the chronically mentally ill in it and who've been certified, you know, by, I, I was certified, uh, even though uh, that wasn't my main problem, but well, did I- Well, they decertify you? <laughs> oh no, I've continued on, I'm sure, but- uh, I'm certifiable, uh, but they're just- I would say, having, certify me. having been in a mental hospital, that communication is almost absent. All, I didn't get the psychiatrist told anything. I was trying to defend myself from their treatment electric shock, you know, I said, I don't need electric shock, are you insane? You see, the difference between <laughs> psychiatrists and a psychologist is that psychiatrists can prescribe drugs where the psychologist just sits there and goes, mm-hmm, well, that's nice. Well, what they can, about? uh... See, now, I, I am closer to being a psychologist. Uh, I prescribe drugs, except the only person I can prescribe them for is me. Well, it's, I think, it's a minor I think drug, psychologists you know. can prescribe drugs nowadays. They can handle the drugs, prescri you know, they can handle the therapy of the, the mentally ill. I d psychologists don't talk to, their time is too precious. Time is precious. What do you mean? They don't talk to you. A hundred dollars an hour? A hundred dollars? Wait, well, it's of only course, 50 minutes. For a hundred dollars an hour, it's, you it's can probably get somebody hour. to talk to you. But I'm talking about most ordinary people that would never have the money to do that. And there's another thing, too. Family feuds. Oh, they're, they could be so damaging. I mean, how many of you got a sister or brother? I just don't like him, and I never liked him. And I'm not, you know, and won't get along with him. To You know, you'll just write him off say he's just too tough to get along with we never got along and i'm not even talking to him well for heaven's sake a family feud can just absorb so much negative energy fighting with a member of the family and oh, so so many uh people I in the family with my parents all the time <laughs> No, you didn't. They loved you. They doted on you. He was an only child, so he didn't know that you well, can have. I was not. You can have uh, people in your family that you just start I was fighting after my brother with. Died, I was and an only child. when you're old, you're still fighting. What? And I thought, oh, what, what because, is fighting ever against because, you? Because. Uh, or what's it good for? Absolutely nothing. Uh, because. I know that song. Anyway, uh, Actually, no, yeah, don't. yeah, a quarrel is just a repeat of something over and over again. Well, I don't agree with you. I mean, you know, when you grow up, siblings fighting, uh, one sibling will think something, the other will think the opposite. This is just like the polit the Democratic and the Republicans. Whatever the Republicans do, Democrats aren't going to like it. It doesn't matter. They're not going to concede that something about it might be a uh, all right uh no it's all wrong so the more contentious you get as a country and in your personal relationships and your with your brothers and sisters with everyone the more you're going to be that in your public life in your political life you're not you're just going to see black and white i'm I'm a Republican, Wait and a I'm not going to see anything about this the Democratic Party. sounds racist to me. <laughs> yeah, racist, racist, and it's the same thing with, with, with racists. I don't like those people, and I don't relate to them, and so, oh, everywhere you go, you run into this uh, problem of going to extremes with your hostilities and not Stopping short and saying, well, the important thing is to try to get along. The important thing is to try to compromise so that you can do, uh, do great things for your country or effective things. Just like now, we're going to fight hard. Uh, the Republican Party is going to fight hard to get somebody in there. But what if they can't? Whoever wins, is the other side going to say, Okay, then. Well, we'll try to work here, and... <laughs> no, sometimes, you know, if uh, I think that in a way, uh, the Democratic Party uh, in power, a lot of Republicans have just criticized and criticized to the extreme, like the, everything they've done is wrong. And the Democrats, liberals, may be doing the same thing to them. 
So the more each party does this, the more contentious, the more apt you are to break out in civil war. So. Well, I have a comment about that. What is it? <laughs> Who too? The comment. That was my comment. Oh, you don't want to get along? No, that's the question. This, these uh, so-called intelligent people are sitting on each side of the couch, and they look at each other and they go. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, they kind of do. Yeah, it we makes about <laughs> as much sense coming out of their mouths as babbling idiots. And if you ever mm. listen to this stuff that's on mm -hmm. on uh, the House of Representatives, and then these guys get up there, you're like, how in the world did anybody vote for this? Expletive deleted, you know? I mean, holy crap. Uh, well, he and, you, and I... And uh, you wonder why our society isn't in the dumper? It is in the dumper. We, the last 25 <laughs> years, we've been voted the stupidest people. Ah! Quiet, quiet. <laughs> He's going to extreme. Uh, that's one, one point of difference we have, is he is too negative. He's I too... I call him like a so Oh, yeah. Yes, he does, but... Uh, I'm calling it like I see it. This guy is over the top. He's one of these people that would you would find it extremely hard to get along with. I find it very hard to get along with him. He's, he goes to extremes. He looks at things from a superior angle, uh, and criticizes and looks down on them, and he's not out there doing anything about it. He's sitting here, retired from life. And that's why I tell him all the time, uh, you need, if, if you criticize these people that have gotten Congress that are so stupid, why aren't you getting in shape and going out there and communicating yourself and, and running maybe for office, but at least out there in uh, the public? I think I'm a little too old to be running. Oh, for you're not too old. He's 74. I'm 80. And I'm blogging. Every day, sometimes twice a well, day. What office are you He's running for? He's sitting down here watching what and What office criticizing. are you running for? Citizizing. Oh, I'm. Oh, I'm just. Uh, I'm not running for any particular office. I'm just there running to to enjoy myself, communicating, good communication. See, and I, you know, I get tired of his uh, negative take. You know, I come down here and I say, okay. No denigrating remarks, or I'm leaving. Well, sooner so you know or later, what? ever since a denigrating remark comes out of his mouth that I can't take. You know. Ever since you told me that, <laughs> I know exactly how to get you out the door, right? Now, see, I'll here's some here's a negative remark. take on this. Well, here's another so, one. Uh, there are certain expletive deletes that'll drive her right up the wall and right out the door. Uh huh. Let we'll me see. tell you what some of them uh -huh. are. No. He has his own channel. He can tell his <laughs> his uh, followers. Yeah. What? I don't have a follower. What's what? Uh, yeah. I have well, no followers. Uh, you know he. Uh, Do I look like any? And now wait a minute. Now just that gears for once. You got a few more minutes to go. Why is he this morning? Now wait a minute. Get a few <laughs> this more must seconds have stimulated to go. his mind. <laughs> I have to say this. <laughs> See what uh, you get when you encourage somebody. <laughs> But I'm very good at defending myself. <laughs> See, well, I'll shut him up. <laughs> that's what I mean. Now, that's good. He, I don't let him ruin my videos. You know, that's the trouble with a lot of women. They don't speak up, and they let the men stifle them. You know, and uh, they have husbands that their husbands comes in and snarls, and you know they cow down a little bit, but I, I never believed in doing that. I believed in communicating no matter what because it was going to save us. I was married to those old snarlers, and my dad was one of those snarlers, and I just spent all my time uh, looking for holes in his arguments and his armor so that I could go right to him and say, "Daddy, Daddy, you, you've been too negative your whole life." And you didn't teach us girls not to fight and quarrel because you fought and quarreled with mother all the time. You 
did not have a relationship with her that was healthy. It was too corrosive. It was too, and we would hear it and put, put, put our hands over our ears. So if you're a husband and wife, is your conversation uh, toxic for your kids to hear? Your arguments, your negative. And I'm just saying that if you have a negative take on life, you're just gonna poison every relationship you have. So first of all, you've got to need to clean up your act. So I tell him, he needs to clean up his act. And, oh, and one of these days, I hope to hear him say, I've decided to quit drinking. No matter what, no matter if I nearly die, no matter if it's the worst thing I've ever gone through, I decided. Now that would be so positive, so full of hope. But he. Well, if I run for president, <laughs> do I run in the Democratic Party, Independent, or Republican? Uh, I, yeah, I well, really first care. of all, you'd have to clean up your act. So. Well, most of the guys I'm up there haven't cleaned I'm up saying, their act. Yeah, clean up your act so you can be positive. I mean, there's nothing well, going positive. to drive a voter away act. from you worse than a whole bunch of negative remarks here and there and everywhere. So that's my word for the devil. And I think it's a good one. I think it's superb. <laughs> Wait a minute, I want one more comment before we go. Now I have to admit that I have no fans, but I always have to say this. Well, the way I perceive it is that was a good talk. Thank you. You're welcome.